Hey guys, VBAT here with another V Plays, and today we're going to be taking out the attacker at tier 9. This is going to represent the beginning of a change for the British light fighter line. After this, you've, or starting at this aircraft, you kind of lost the Spitfire name. You've had four Spitfires up to this point, and then getting into the attacker, you start to see an increase in altitude, an increase in airspeed, but at the sacrifice of some maneuverability. You do get to retain the setup of four 20mm cannons, however, which makes things a little bit nicer and a little bit easier to contend with. And the maneuverability isn't terrible, it's enough to be able to kind of bring you into that mid-altitude fighter category. It's when you get to tier 10, things get a little bit different because now you're going to be getting into an aircraft that favors a lot of speed and much less maneuverability compared to what you've been used to in the past. And while it's still a very viable aircraft, it's sometimes a little bit tough for people to get through as it being a totally new way to kind of fly in the game. And on top of that, the Swift carries two 30mm cannons, and 30s are already a bit of a pain to begin with. And when you only have two of them, it just makes things even more difficult. As you can see here, we were able to easily catch up and intercept these aircraft. If I can get this guy, that'll be the end of it, but let's go ahead and throw on the pneumatic assist here to be able to get around on him. Got the aircraft. And now there's a heavy inbound and also a multi-roll. So let's try and avoid his rockets real quick. I'm going to go for the altitude exchange here. And we're going to go for the 72. These 20s do have the ability to reach out and touch people at range. Getting some good crits. And... Here we got him. Got him. Perfect. All right, let's head over and see if we might be able to hold off on this zone. Can we help out? There's a bomber up high, RB-17. Uh, we'll be lucky if we can keep the zone. Yeah, we're not going to be able to lock this one up. But maybe our guys are able to get the mine. It looks like we've got most of our heavy hitters over there. I'm going to go for an intercept on the TU-10 right here. Getting these 20s on target, keeping them nice and cool. There we go. Knocked him out. FJ1 is not at a good airspeed, so that actually worked out in our favor. And here is a 209 Alpha Tier 8 German Light Fighter. Oh, a little bit too squirrely for me. He out actually outslowed us there. Let's come back around on him. All right, moving on. Let's go towards the enemy command center and keep this ABC going. I do see an ally that's getting engaged by a Jawa here. Find the sweet spot with these cannons, and now moving on to the next target. I see the enemy bombers here, that's weird. Favoring an up and over turn, and then slicing back down on the target. Okay, pretty sure that the... Oh. Okay, the FJ-1's going to be able to outturn me, so I want to get him while he's distracted. For whatever reason, he's decided that the BVP is a much more dangerous threat than me, but he's going to be wrong. There we go. Heading back for the mid. We know the enemy's going to be picking up the center. I think maybe assisting at the mine. Always be capping, V. Always be capping. Move on to the next target. Is that ground attacker just crashed? We'll call out targets, though. I do see the Jawa is back. Let's see if we can get the guns on as we approach. Got some good hits. If we can just cripple him. Kill would be nice, though. Kill works. I don't know why that 72 is up so high. Um, but there's a heavy. P-1056. Jawa's more dangerous, though. Oh, not the same type of luck we were hoping for there. 
Oh, but he got taken out. Um, <clears throat> 209 Alpha. Locking guns on. <clears throat> Going with a pneumatic assist. Like I said, we still have decent maneuverability. And we locked up this zone. Cool. Going after the 1056. This is another one of my favorite aircraft right there. That 1056 is a beautiful plane. Absolute monster. Uh, I see Atwood up high. And this is really where the attacker comes into its own. It's the ability to get up to very high speeds compared to all of its predecessor. And it just kind of feels nice because I think at around tier 8, you're starting to feel like the Spitfire is lacking in airspeed. All right, follow my own rules here. Might have got blood in my eye for that target but let's move on to the center for the abc's of this game we've already hit oh yeah that was the only human i thought the other human was a heavy for some reason but always be capping move on to the next sector we're probably going to get air superiority no maybe not not quite a kill there Oh, really? I was kind of expecting the J7W2 to kill that guy. Two oh nine Alpha. All right. Spot controlled, so I got a ghost of a chance here. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Getting some distance. Look at that airspeed, over five hundred miles an hour. Let the rest of the cooler. Get us into a good position here. Ooh, that was a bit of a ram. Mistake on my part. Let's drag him through our own AA. Make his life a little bit more difficult. And let's go for another head-on. Maybe I didn't want to drag him through the AA. How am I supposed to get this kill? Oh, shucks. Just shy. I bet if we would have killed him in the zone, it might have counted for some defense points. We might have gotten a wing legend out of that. Ah, darn it. Anyways. We'll get back to the hangar, we'll take another look at this aircraft, but point being is that even though it's a change and it's a little bit different than what you were expecting coming down the entire Spitfire line, the attacker is different and in a lot of ways uh, that kind of gets a bit of negative attention from folks moving down the line because they're used to what I typically call the easy button of the Spitfires, you know, it does exactly what you think it should be doing when you yank the controls over, the plane turns real well. But you're getting the special version of the Mark V Hispanos, which gives you a little bit more damage per second. And you get an aircraft that, while it doesn't have an 8 second turn anymore, you're now at a 10 second turn, it's still more than capable of being able to turn with the aircraft it's going to be engaging at a much higher altitude bracket. This is still going to be mid-altitude-esque performance right here. A lot of the aircraft at this tier are hitting around 8,500 feet if I'm not mistaken, but being able to get up to nearly 13,000 with an incredible rate of climb, I really didn't feel like I was hurting for airspeed and energy, even when I was climbing up to nearly 10,000 feet. And that's where this aircraft can really come into its own. So once you get it out of your head that this is the next plane on the Spitfire line and start thinking, I'm flying the attacker, it's going to end up working out much better for you. I was flying with somebody the other day that was blaming the plane for being a problem for them flying the attacker. So I actually took the aircraft out and then that a next battle, I ended up having an ace. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording. So I figured I'd do another video on the aircraft just showing, well, what ended up being an average battle. And the aircraft performed swimmingly, as you just saw. The ability to just move so quickly. Look at that top boost speed of 606 miles an hour. Like, if we were to go and start comparing Tier 9, Tier 8, let's pull up a Tier 8 aircraft. Let's pull up my Vampire, for instance. What is my Vampire's top airspeed? 543. Let's pull up a Tier 9 aircraft. TA or The TA-183 is known for speed, right? It's only 571. So the attacker's got that aircraft beat. The J-8M, known for being a very quick aircraft, right? Only 598 miles an hour. The attacker can catch the J-8M. So there are a lot of good aircraft out there uh, that 
are a little bit underappreciated because of the expectation that comes with it. People are coming from a spit 14 and they think that they should be moving, they should be able to do these crazy maneuvers and the subsequent aircraft. But when they get the to the attacker, they're somewhat disappointed because it's not what they expected it to be. And the same thing goes for the Swift, actually. I'm going to pull up the Swift stats real quick because I feel like this is an aircraft that's underrated. And eventually I'll hopefully do a showcase on it again. But this aircraft has incredible speed. The maneuverability gets pretty decent. Uh, you were looking at 10.5 second turn time. If we were to compare that to like the 1101, who has a 10.3 second turn time, it's still a very reasonable amount of maneuverability, incredible speed, great climb rate, and the guns can actually pump out 660 damage per second. And a majority of that's going to be crits once you get used to dealing with the 30 millimeter cannons. So again, if you're moving down the British line, or any line for that matter, and you run into an aircraft that has a completely different play style, give it a chance and try to wrap your head around the challenge of learning a new style of play, because it might not be the aircraft. It might be your preconceived notions. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.